Hello, hello, hello. So earlier this year, I've done a video on AI rendering for uh, Revit, which was basically like a plugin that was used for rendering to create AI renders from the viewport. And there were a lot of comments uh, under that video asking if there are any similar plugins for Rhino. And back then there were none, but things have changed. So now I present to you Arco AI, which is a AI render engine for Rhino. Also SketchUp, also Revit, but we will be focusing on Rhino. So in this video, I'm going to guide you through how you can download it, how you can install it, how you can run it. And basically we're just going to test out a few little things. One thing to note is, if you want an expanded version of me testing and playing around with this uh, with this tool then check out the link in the video description of my second channel where i'll do a, a longer video testing out trying to break the program okay so without any further ado let's talk about arco ai first thing that i need to cover is the price right so there is a free trial that you can use um, and if we go, I guess we can just scroll down, can't we? No, we can't. Let's go here, Rhino. There we go, free trial includes 30 free renders. So if you just want to test it out real quick, just to see, you know, if you're vibing with the program, you can just get it for, you know, 30 free renders. Then the price itself is right here. For educational, if you're a student, that's $25 per month, personal $39 per month, and for businesses, it's, you know, business per business basis. So that's, in my opinion, that is pretty steep, but hey, uh, I, I guess uh, the creator, creators of Arco AI, they will dial in the pricing once they see how much of a, you know, how many people are actually uh, purchasing the product. In terms of the license, um, I do have, uh, I have arranged for the community to get uh, five uh, months of uh, like free license, free full license for five months. So uh, the way we are going to do this is if you share this video, either on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on where, wherever, and just tag me into it because I need to, you know, to see it so that we can connect. So if you share this video, you tag me in, the first five people who do that will get uh, one month of free personal license, the pro license, if you will. So yeah, that's, that's that. Um, in terms of uh, the functionality, it's quite similar to any other AI render engine that you see, but I will talk about the functionality in, in ju just a second. The way you install Arco AI is by going to Rhino, actually, already in Rhino, and typing in package manager, package manager. So Arco AI is installed through the package manager inside of Rhino. You just type in Arco AI, there it is, and click on install, right? And there are these, these versions and so on of it. You just click on install and it's gonna, uh, gonna be installed, right? Then you need to restart Rhino. And once you're done, you're good to go. I already have Arco AI installed. So I'm, I'm going to just kind of continue with the video. So once you have installed Arco AI, and just in case I also restarted my uh, Rhino, you can run it naturally. So the way you run it is you type in Arco AI start command. That's just a simple Arco AI. If you type it into the command line, that's, that's gonna be uh, running. And then here you just type in your email address and password, right? If you don't have your account yet, then you can just sign up and create your account. So after logging in, you will see your viewport right we are at the trial version so there are 30 renders left and there are only quite a few but uh, just a few uh sliders and so on to change so first of all uh here you can choose which discipline are you rendering right so if i expand this you can see 
aerospace, agriculture, architecture, and so on, right? So this is basically you giving the AI an idea of what it needs to render out. So let's go for architecture. Then uh, here you type in a prompt. So I'm just gonna go for Scandinavian, Icelandic, landscape, minimalism, um, stone, cloudy sky, dramatic. I know, I'm, I'm just using weird prompts. Um, then you have three sliders here prompt importance difference from original and image quality so naturally you need to you know ramp up that image quality to max um, even though it's gonna render for a longer time difference from original this is basically how much of a, a freedom are you giving the ai to go away from the geometry that it sees uh, in the viewport so typically you want this to be a pretty low value if you don't want it to be too chaotic right and prompt importance this is how important are these uh, words um, in terms of generating the image so basically these two sliders they to to a certain extent they work um, against each other right so you need to balance them so I'll just say it's pretty important. Then we just find a nice little angle. Let's go for something like this. You need to click on the refresh original uh, view like that. You get it and you click on render and that's it. It's going to render for just a little while, like 10 seconds or, or something. And then it's going to pop out uh, an image for us. There we go. That does look like an Icelandic landscape and there's even stuff happening on the roof and we have like a concrete well quite quite a minimalist building like the geometry doesn't let it become minimalist you can see that it doesn't understand that these should be windows so we can kind of help it by uh, let's just hide the windows and let's just see if it's going to understand what the hell is going on if we have holes where windows should be so i'm probably not going to change the well maybe difference from original i'll make it even lower and i'll just hit render so let's see again more testing is going to happen in the mm, okay so it still has troubles with uh, rendering out or understanding the windows right but in general in general terms I, I think it iterates through different kind of fields just like any uh, AI rendering engine it iterates through different fields feels not feels quite quite well so if you're interested in seeing me playing around with interior design like uh, testing out how it would interpret a Nakagin capsule tower or something like that, then check out the, again, the video of the second channel. That's a much longer video. But with this one, we're kind of done. It's a small little plugin, a qu quite compact, quite expensive, but might be useful in some cases, especially at the early stages of the project, right? I'll see you in the next one. Later.